Good afternoon. We're here for the 10th meeting, I believe, of the Maritime Transportation Data Initiative. We're very pleased to have uh, the chairman of the FMC, uh, Dan Maffei, uh, here with us. I think also uh, Commissioner Vekic is going to uh, be on board and, and participating in the meeting today. Uh, Dan, I wanted, I know you've got some time constraints, so I just wanted to turn it over uh, to you for, uh, for uh, any comment you want to make. Yeah, I do. I do have some time constraints. Also, I'm, I'm not 100% sure we should have two commissioners uh, on these me more than two commissioners on these meetings because of open meeting laws and stuff. But don't worry, I don't. We're not going to make any decisions. But I, I look. I um, asked uh, uh, Commissioner Bensel to do this because the data is such an important uh, thing, and and there's all sorts of conversations going around. And frankly, I wanted to make sure one that uh, the FMC and its expertise is part of that. And two, that all the various stakeholders were listening to, listened to. And I had um, some doubts whether that was just happening naturally. Um, and certainly one of the biggest stakeholders in that uh, are the workers. And so um, I, I just think this meeting is so important and I'm so glad that there's a good turnout. Um, uh, saw some of you just, God, it was, was it only last week? Oh my God, it feels like a long time ago, but it was only last week. Um, when I was in LA and we had a good conversation then. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, and, uh, that was the ILWU and I'm incredibly uh, grateful uh, to the ILA as well. Um, but in any of the the, the, the worker uh, groups, because, uh, you know, no solution is going to work unless it works uh, right where the rubber hits the road on the front line. And that means that it's got to work for America's port workers and uh, other transportation workers. So um, I, I, I wish I could stay for the whole thing, but as you probably just heard, everything is recorded and I'm certainly gonna watch it uh, afterwards. And, and just know that we, you know, we really genuinely are, are listening to you. Um, I, I, again, I don't, I don't think that uh, we can move forward with this unless you know, we have a pretty good consensus. And, and fortunately, I know that Commissioner Benzel is looking for, for just that. So again, I, I appreciate it and I apologize. I'll stay on for a few minutes, but I, I will have to jump off to take another call. Um, you can blame the US Senate. <laughs> so, well, thanks, uh, back back to you, Commissioner Benzel. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's, uh, I'm glad you uh, uh, stopped, uh, stepped in and uh, gave us a few words of uh, encouragement. Uh, we, of course, we're gonna work with uh, ILA and the ILWU and the labor organizations and, and the workers and the transportation industry. It's, uh, if, if, if they're not in line with what we're trying to do, we, it, it's just not gonna work. And so we're, we're trying to make the system more efficient. And, and, and I think uh, ultimately, if, it, you, if you're more efficient, you're safer and more productive and everyone's happier and, and wealthier. So uh, uh, Max, did you, Commissioner uh, Vekage, did you wanna say anything or you just wanna, uh, uh, participate in the discussions later on. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Betzel and uh, Chair Maffei. Uh, I wasn't sure uh, whether I should step away, so I did. Uh, however, uh, I, I very much welcome uh, uh, this meeting. The voice of stakeholders, all, all stakeholders are important, but uh, the point end of the spear people should be absolutely uh, listened to and um, I, I know from the bottom up there's a lot of frustration about uh, inefficiencies uh, in the cargo and the supply chain and that's uh, uh, but the people that often have ideas uh, they have no way to make those those thoughts heard and are always cautioned no no it's our business model by various, uh, 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 you know, uh, by the by the various companies, and say uh, it's uh, that's the way we want to do things. And so it's um, a lot of good ideas, I think, are 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 not uh, acted upon. So uh, and it would help with productivity, I, I think. So I'm really happy uh, uh, that the enlightened approach uh, uh, Chair Maffei and 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 Commissioner Bensel are taking to try to hear those voices. It's uh, a move in the right direction and part of this supply chain solution. Thank you. Uh, we've got a, a great panel today. Um, before we uh, started, uh, we actually was, was out on the West Coast and met with Mike uh, 
and uh, and Dane uh, are, are two of our witnesses. Uh, I'm a longtime friend of Alan Robb. Uh, we're working on Port of Houston issues, making sure that uh, we get big, bigger ships into Houston safely, uh, but so that we can take Neo Panamax shipping in uh, into Houston. I think it's a critical issue, and Alan's been working really hard to make sure we can do that. And so it's uh, something that's uh, uh, critical uh, for our nation to, to get uh, Neo Panamax shipping going into the Gulf of Mexico uh, long term. Uh, and I think. Uh, we have David Sicalisi. We had uh, planned to have Dennis Daggett from the ILA um, uh, participating today. I don't think he was going to be able to make it. I'm not exactly positive if, if David's on, uh, um, but I will start to proceed uh, and then hope that he catches up with us and, and that uh, he's on. Uh, I did want to say a couple of things before we go. Uh, on this, uh, this is an effort to evaluate uh, data that's out there uh, uh, through the supply chain uh, from the point uh, which cargo is put on a ship, embarkation, uh, not the cargo itself, but uh, about the movement of cargo, ocean shipping, uh, marine terminal operations, uh, uh, trucking, the truckers, the trade companies that provide services to and from the ports, uh, the railroads, uh, distribution centers, large aggregators, expediters, uh, NVOCCs, uh, freight forwarders, the, the entire industry in terms of the information that's out there that they can use to do their jobs better. And we are looking solely at the data, the status of operations and information about the uh, location uh, and, and, and presence of, of, uh, of cargo as it goes through the chain uh, of supply chain. So um, we, uh, we're going to uh, listen to all of our, uh, uh, our participants today, but I wanted to uh, take something off the table from the, from the start. Uh, this is not uh, a, uh, a meeting that's uh, 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 addressing issues related to automation at marine terminal operations. Uh, we, uh, those are issues that are subject to collective bargaining between uh, marine terminal operators and, and carriers and uh, and the labor unions that work there. Um, and, and frankly, I don't think the issue is there. The issue is connectivity between the different modes of transportation. Uh, our statutes have a lot of, of prescriptions uh, of, about what the industry can't do. One of the things they have in it is prescriptions about what we should not do, and that's intervene in the process of uh, collective bargaining. And it's uh, our, our statute has a number of references to limitations on our abilities to do this. So uh, I um, am here to hear your, your recommendations about the information that you need to do your jobs better, what uh, sort of uh, where you see gaps in data, uh, any suggestions on how to run the system uh, better with, with respect to efficiencies and, and, and flow through the ports. Um, and interested to hear from, from each of you uh, about what you see uh, happening out there. Um, we have some incredible issues uh, that we're facing as a nation with our supply chain. It's getting a little bit better. I uh, uh, talked to our uh, chief economist today. She said that, that there's some clearing of, of vessels at the Port of LA, Long Beach. Uh, it's getting a little bit better. Uh, so that's some good news. Uh, hopefully now we can sustain that momentum and continue to move cargo. We are broadcasting live from CSX Intermodal Rail Terminals in Bedford Park, Illinois. I've spent the last two days visiting uh, railroad terminals to see how they operate, what sort of information they have. And so it's a real pleasure uh, seeing uh, uh, the huge railroad operations in Chicago that are so vital to, to our nation's uh, supply of, of cargo. Um, and with that, uh, I think I'm gonna turn it over to the participants uh, uh, in order. Um, I think, uh, Mike, uh, I'm just going to go from the screen that I see and recognize you in turn. Uh, please feel free to, uh, to say whatever you want with respect uh, to the questions that we have um, uh, uh, already provided to you. Um, this is an open meeting. Uh, it's it's uh, going to be posted on the FMC YouTube page and on the Maritime Transportation Data Initiative webpage. 
if one of the participants chooses to share something, use the share function for the public to be able to, uh, to review it. Um, only the participants will be speaking at this, but we will be posting the meeting on our MTA, uh, MTD uh, webpage for public access. Uh, and, and we welcome uh, and encourage public impact in, input. You can email your feedback to us on data gaps and data needs at maritime data at fmc.gov. Should you choose to submit public feedback, please reference whether it is in, in reference to an individual meeting or whether it is a general comment. Also, we will be posting submitted materials and comments on our webpage. We cannot post PowerPoint, so we ask that material be submitted in Word or PDF format. Please do not include any personal, personal identifiable information, PII, on any submissions to the FMC. We will be continuing these meetings every Tuesday at 3 p.m., leading to our FMC Maritime Transportation Data Initiative Summit this spring. Last meeting, we met with large aggregators. And if you haven't seen it, please look at the FMC YouTube channel and our webpage. Again, this is our 10th meeting. I'm really looking forward to hearing from our representatives uh, from the ILWU and the ILA. Uh, I, I know uh, many of them and, uh, and their friends. And, uh, and with that, I'm, I guess I'm going to turn it over to Alan. Uh, please uh, feel free to, uh, to move forward. Alan, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. No. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Carl, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come in and be a part of this. Uh, thank you to the chairman for his his remarks and, and uh, Michael, uh, Dane, good to see you guys. David, uh, always good to see you. Um, you know, I, I guess I'll just, I don't know how you want to format this. Um, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, maybe what I'll do is just kind of, uh, go over the first question and I'll give some answers about that. And then the rest of the panel can, can join in and, and, um, and kind of from their vantage point, talk about that first question. And then we can move down the list if that works. Why don't um, you do it? Why don't Alan, you do your stuff, go through all, all the questions and okay. then I'll turn it over. And if it's uh, please, if there's some redundancies, don't worry about it. It's good for yeah. us to have some redundancy in, in the point of view. Uh, so then after that, uh, uh, potentially Max and I will have some uh, questions for you, but just go through the right. questions and I'll turn Perfect. it over to the next. Okay, so uh, topic number uh, one, key data elements and data gaps. Uh, the, the first question is, what are the key data elements that are integral integral, integral to your operations? And, and I guess the answer to that is um, probably ours cargo type, um, operation codes tied to fringe benefit payments, uh, job codes, wage rates, certifications, things like that. Um, that's what we, you know, that's what we're collecting. Uh, and, and then in, in a lot of cases, disseminating out to our membership, we have, we have, um, we have, uh, an ILA app that, that uh, communicates with, with the largest majority of our members um, where they get, um, you know, job data in kind of in real time, so to speak, or as it, as it runs through the payroll system. Um, and so those things are important to us. You know, our members want to know if, if they go in and, and work uh, a job today, they want to know the details, the specific details of that job as it pertains to, um, you know, payments and hours and so on and so on. And, and then we track that over the, the course of a contract year. Um, and so they know, you know, for the most part in real time, what their you know, what all that data looks like at, at any given minute. So right at their fingertips and that, that is, um, we don't, we, we, we built that in Houston. Um, we're, we're kind of providing it uh, as a service to members up and down the coast, some of whom have, have um, uh, bought into feeding the data to us so we can distribute it. Uh, and, and, and some of that is, is happening a little slower than that. So, um, you know, ideally what we're, what we're, 
uh, in search of is kind of 100% participation from employers, maritime associations, um, the members that we represent and so on, so that uh, as we as we um, acquire that data, we can we can disseminate it to uh, to everybody that is interested in it. Uh, we've we have uh, created a business intelligence uh, dashboards um, that track literally every man hour, every every penny of 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 payroll, of fringe, of um, every 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 job code. Uh, that we work so that so that we can um, you know see where we need to focus if we get into negotiations or if we have you know trouble spots filling labor we want to know where those trouble spots are so we need so we know where to focus our resources and and training and certifications and so on um, as we have moved into this, this bottleneck of sorts, if you will, um, you know, labor shortages has been a tremendous problem, and and um, and so the data that we collect helps us to focus on where we're running short, where we need to concentrate our efforts, and so on. So, um, so uh, you know, we we it, it's a it's that data is is incredibly important to us. We're getting a lot of it. We'd like to get more. Um, the, the next question to the extent that you, uh, that you export, what are the key data elements that are, that are um, integral to, to export? And that is, I, I really kind of, this is a little repetitious, but hours by cargo type, um, uh, contract year members hours by operation code and job code, uh, member rosters, uh, reports confirming payments uh, of various types. Um, we have COPE funds, PAC funds, certification uh, requirements, and expirations. Um, so, uh, so we 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 want to export everything we can export. We want to feed our membership every bit of information that they can use. We are. We are building this system every day. We, we grow it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The more information we can take in, the better off we are. Um, next question is what data uh, do you not currently have access to that would improve your efficiency and performance? I think what we're really working on now is um, kind of vessel, vessel and manifest information, right? And what that allows us to do is uh, in sharing that data, um, really collectively, right? So, so those are the that data is is really um, available to us through uh, the maritime associations, through the through the employers. Um, it takes you know it takes some uh, effort. Uh, you know, some collective effort for us to gather all that stuff together. But what it allows us to do, if we have schedules and voyages and vessel types and, and vessel profiles and so on, uh, it allows us to to really provide a more accurate forecast of um, what labor is going to look like, right? So if we're, you know, right now, um, you, you never know when you could go short. I mean, we're having the same problem everybody else in the country's having, right? We're we're paying we're paying premium wages and begging people to go to work. You know, I always I always joke and say that I missed an hour of overtime in 1976, and it still bothers me today. Um, you know, young people today, and no disrespect to to the millennials. Um, have a different have a different uh, outlook on, you know their 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 participation on the job site, and that that's not a bad thing, you know. Uh, it's just, but it certainly creates a challenge for us. And so, if we can get things like um, schedules and, and and vessel types and voyages and so on, and we can track that information for long periods of time, what it allows us to do is it allows us to 
you know, look forward, take a, take a good look forward and know if there are going to be ebbs and flows, um, in, in, in labor, if we're going to need, you know, if we're going to need an extra hundred people on Tuesday, two weeks from now, or if we're going to need, um, you know, an extra people, some, some, an, an extra labor group or, or additional truck drivers because of the, the work that stacked up a certain way and do we need to focus on those certifications and so on so if we could if we could validate the cargo with the manifest we could provide a more accurate uh, labor cost uh, time forecasting for vessel types and cargo types so um, the ability to to, to connect uh, vessel and labor to specific ports uh, and the demographics of, of each port would allow us to facilitate a more accurate uh, logistics and, and cost analysis. Um, so, uh, you know, we think that, that uh, as we grow, um, as we grow the, the, the if, as we import data and it allows us to export data, um, more data, we think that we, we can forecast uh, you know, the, the need for labor more efficiently and, and, um, try to, try to alleviate some of the, some of the bottleneck issues that we have. Uh, next question, how do you provide data to your customers? Um, we really, you know, we, we don't really have customers. Uh, we, we only have members. Um, and, but we do provide data, as I said earlier, uh, to our members, to our locals, um, and, and even to our employers, right? We, because we collect so much data um, in cases where we, we, where we um, have a collective uh, agenda to, to um, fill labor orders and, and kind of pr progress our organization, we share data with our with our employer groups and and um, and that works that works well for both of us. Uh, I think that's the last question. If if anybody's got any questions, uh, please feel free to to answer them. I mean to ask, and I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks, Alan. That was really great. Uh, I know you're working really hard down on the Gulf Coast to keep. Uh, enough uh, people available for work uh, and uh, doing a great job. Uh, I think some of the issues that uh, that we've seen on the West Coast are spilling over a little bit now to the Gulf Coast and South Atlantic. Yeah, uh, and uh, so uh, just, uh, and I'll turn it out, you know, I'm, I'm going to let Max do uh, a lot on this one because he uh, is a worker from the industry and, and he knows far more about the ins and outs. Uh, really, we we uh, when we asked you questions, uh, it's a little different from some of the uh, business types because you're uh, a labor union. But uh, sure. I was talking to uh, Roger Gunther, uh, uh, port director down Houston. You're, you're you're close. You work closely with them and about the I issue of forecasting vessel arrivals. And and it's sort of amazing to me that you know you're still getting emails about uh, the port is about when ships will come in uh, instead of really being able to, these things are not moving all that fast. Um, and their status and information about uh, the types of cargo that are coming in, uh, because it's changing now. You know, there are, are yeah. irregular services coming in and, and difference, differences. And so I wanted to figure out how, how long in advance of, when do you sort of know that you need to adjust uh, training and, and employment uh, uh, situations where you look to hire more uh, folks. And, and so how much time does it take before you really uh, can be responsive? I know there's things that you need to do to do that. And, and so I, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing this now uh, because of the surges of cargo. So, so that forecasting issue and sharing information, tell me a little bit about when do you need more information and in what format is it is it aggregate data that shows the trends or or, or is it well, immediate? Yeah, that, that's what we're Go looking ahead. for commissioner we're, we're looking for we're looking for for you know for for a, a model that 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 gives us trends unfortunately the current you know up until now what we've done is 
you know, the, the, the methodology has been, oh shit, we went short Tuesday. <laughs> let's hire some more people or let's, you know, train some, we were short truck drivers. So by God, you know, rush some guys down and get them certified in a truck. And so what we want to do in forecasting is we want to, we want to be able to see into the future and we want to know, you know, ahead of time, it, you know, there, there is, there is a lag time in, in getting guys certified, even guys that are in our industry now. I'm not talking about going out on the street and, and grabbing some guys off the street and getting them into the queue and getting them, you know, work numbers and set up in the payroll system and then and then trained or certified. I'm talking about if we wanted to take some guys that we had working in the industry right now that were working in one particular job description and we wanted to cross train them to another you know the lag time is is could potentially be a couple of weeks to to a couple of months, and so um, we want to know we want to be able to look into the future by doing this forecasting and know ahead of time what we've got to. So it certainly needs to be, you know, thirty days, sixty days in advance what it looks like, and and it's it, it'll never be a perfect science because you know in, anybody who can tell you exactly when a ship is going to get to port you know, two weeks out has got a crystal ball that I've never seen before. So um, we, we think that, that it, it, it'll never be a perfect science. We, we think that forecasting will give us the ability to get better at what we do. You know, um, we were, it, as, as, as you probably know, I mean, I think, you know, there are, there are certainly a lot of ports around the country that are, that are uh, going short some labor and we always, uh, you know, it haunts me when I when I when I lay my head down that that we didn't that we missed a job today or something or a couple of jobs or a gang or two or three or four or whatever the case may be. Um, but we're you know we're 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 getting more efficient and we're getting better at it. Uh, it it really is a challenge with with some of the younger folks who have a different set of a different set of values than say the traditionalists or the baby boomers. You know. Um, and, and we're, we're, we're adapting to that. Um, but, uh, we, but we are getting better. You know, we are looking a little bit into the future and as we, as we continue to build this forecast model, we'll get, we'll get even more efficient at it and, uh, and know where we need to shift labor. And, and, you know, obviously the end game for us or the, or the end goal for us is that we, we never short one job. I mean, we're in the labor business, you know, and, and, and I want, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to have a year, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to see 365 days where we, where we filled every labor order that was placed with us. And, and it's a very cyclical business, as you guys all know. Uh, so sometimes, you know, to, to forecast something that, that is uh, weeks out in a cyclical schedule is, is, is very, very difficult, but, uh, but we want to, you know, it, at the end of the day, you, you can't just keep throwing bodies at it because, because you got to feed everybody, you know? So, so you may have uh, 2,000 guys working one day and 500 working the next. And what do you do with those 1,500 when they're not working, you know? So it's, it's um, we think that, that, that the data that we're, the, the data collection system that we're building, the forecasting model that we're building is going to help with that so that we can get you know kind of within certain parameters the right number of the right number of men and women to to uh to kind of be on the front line with us and and so so ideally we never go short a job but we're feeding everybody you know everybody's making a great living with great benefits and and we're not leaving anybody behind it's it's uh it's a full-time job believe me but uh but i appreciate the opportunity to talk about it that's for sure thank you okay max do you want to you know, should we go down? You want to go to the next uh, witness, uh, uh, or Max? Do you have a, a a comment that you want to make, or do you want to wait until the end? Uh, Commissioner Bensel, uh, Alan, Rob, uh, boy, you sound like so many people on the West Coast we work with, and know that, boy, the ring of truth um, through what you said and. Uh, and uh, the idea that we could actually project accurately into the future um, and meet the needs is, well, that's a, that's a fantasy come true. I would like to see that. And let's build that. Let's build that. And they will come. And 
And I, I thought it was just me being a boomer that was worried that, you know, I have lost the ability to communicate the, the value of that lost overtime hour uh, to millennials. And, uh, and, and, and yet I got two kids who are union millennial members of the ILWU that, um, you know, somehow I think they're throwbacks, so they're old school, but uh, they're chasing that dollar and they're showing up for work. But uh, yeah, but, but certainty, you know, our workforces on both coasts have, have never had certainty. We go to a hall, we don't know if they're gonna get a job or not, you know? And you know, that's, it's great having hiring halls, but it's not great leaving the hiring hall empty handed. So the idea of giving every, of filling every job, that's a great dream and a great aspiration. And I think, um, yeah, just commend you on that goal and commend you on your work. And I just, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a little concerned that um, the supply chain issues, we're going to lose that some forces that could be voices for more, more workforce, the needs of the workforce are going to get ground out for railroad crossings, chassis shortages, and other issues that are all legit, are all legit, but, you know, we need to, uh, we need to remember it's the people that move these, this cargo, and moving cargo is our business, and, and we do it better than anybody else in the world, I think. So, uh, I'll get off my soapbox now, but Carl, but, uh, you know, I just, this is a great discussion, and this can lead to great things, and, uh, and I hope the FMC uh, steps in and uh, uh, embraces the idea that we should be an advocate for not just the supply chain, but for attracting more people to the workforce. So, Alan, Rob, I look forward to meeting you in person um, and um, and getting around and uh, and visiting the other coasts and uh, and uh, and senior operations. Thanks, Max. Anytime, anytime you you want to you want to take a trip, man. I'll. I'll uh, I'd be glad to uh, to to be your tour guide. You're on. Thank Thanks, you, brother. Man. Okay, uh, David. Uh, I'm gonna probably kill this, but Cicalisi is that is that uh, close? It's Chickalise, but you did a good shot at it. Chickalise. <laughs> well, uh, David uh, is uh, vice president. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, let's see if I got it. Let's see. Um, Vice President, Local One, and uh, you're stepping in for Dennis Daggett. See, please tell Dennis uh, thanks for, uh, for for trying to show up. We, we understand there was some uh, conflicts. And so I'll let you uh, go to the questions. Sure. Um, not to correct you, but um, the President of Local One, which is the Checkers and Clerks, okay. and, the, and the Vice President of Atlantic Coast District. Um, data is the key component to our industry. In order to facilitate the supply process, there must be full transparency and access to marine maritime transportation data, but limitation on the manipulation of such data by third parties such as truckers, etc. In the checker and clerk world, all data is communicated either through EDI or manually, manually input of the terminal operating system, or such as the TOS, we call it. Electronic data interchange or EDI is either uploading or downloading files or directly put through to the TOS from the shipping lines. All info needs to be transparent, but too many hands in the soup can spoil the pot, meaning the read write access to the terminal operating system needs to be kept on the pier done by the ILA labor in regards to the TOS. ILA clerks, by virtue of the collective bargaining agreement, have jurisdiction over the work of uploading and downloading all EDI files and the transmittal of these files. Navis is perhaps the best known terminal operating system and training for all ILA clerks is now being provided under our CBA. Proper training and education of what to do with this data is the key necessity to ensure the data flows in the right direction. Any hiccups of this data only slows down the process for everyone. We do allow management the right to create the work queue, which is the sequence of workflow to be performed according to our CBA. But the CBA does not give management the right to perform the work of implementing the work queue. Clerks must have full access 
to all data at the terminals in the terminal operating system and the ability to manipulate or edit the, the terminal operating system. All data on terminals comes from the shipping lines through EDI and trucker's info is manually input through either an appointment system or just a regular gate inbound or outbound move. The key point of my time here is by having clerks have full access to the terminal data and, and the manipulation of that data keeps the data flowing in the right direction. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, so in order to keep uh, things moving and to get the West Coast the equal time, uh, I'm gonna turn it right over uh, to, uh, to Dane, I think, Dane Jones. Uh, Dane and Mike and I uh, uh, met out in LA last week uh, when I was at a conference there. Uh, it was great to see you again. So Dane, why don't you go forward? Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Hey, uh, David, thank you for your remarks. Rob, thank you for your, or Mr. Rob, thank you for your remarks. We, we appreciate you guys. I also like, um, Mr. Chickley, I'm a clerk. I'm a vessel planner, I'm a, I'm a supercargo. And if I explain to you all the data that I, that I work with day in and day out your your eyeballs would roll back in your head, you'd lose the will to live. It would be terrible. Um, so I wanna, I wanna address, if I may, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, no, I need to be able to share my screen here. Can I do that, please? Can we uh, see if he can do a, a sheen, uh, share screen, uh, Carl or Christine? Come on, big money. Is it coming through? Not yet. Give, give Carl a second. I believe in him. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, Carl. Um, okay. It came up. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. So um, I want to address the narrative. And there's a, there's, a, there's a story going around out there that the ports are broken. The ports are broken and America can't get its stuff. Um, and it's broken because there, the, there's no data. The data is not available. The data that is available isn't digital and the data that is digital isn't granular. Nobody can see anything that's going on, right? Um, the truth of the matter is the ports are not broken. And if you take a look at the last two years, this is in the United States all the way around. I'm leaning on my brother, uh, Mr. Rob. I'm leaning on my brother, Mr. Chickalese here. This is for all the United States. We've moved more cargo through our ports in millions of TEUs than we have in the history of the country. All right. And we and did that. I just uh, um, Could you maybe reduce the size to, to 100? I think it'll be easier to see. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Okay. That, so, so we are here, right? And these last two years when, when a lot of America was telecommuting to work and, and ordering uh, takeout Chinese from DoorDash, longshoremen and longshorewomen were down on the docks actually moving more cargo than we ever have. All right, so the, so the, the story that the, that the ports are broken is neither true nor accurate nor helpful, right? And so the question, and, and I wanted to give you guys just a, just a, a flavor of the data that is in fact available digitally to our principal stakeholders. And by principal stakeholders, I'm talking about beneficial cargo owners, I'm talking about ocean carriers, I'm talking about truckers, I'm talking about uh, regulators. And, um, and there, are, there are a variety of different information sources that facilitate this historic movement of cargo that, that these uh, longshore workers have performed over the last few years. Um, some of the portals that are available for profit. Um, you've got the Port of LA has got a, a port optimizer. You can see that at that URL posted on the screen. There's a, a popular uh, portal called eModal. The Port of Long Beach is, is working on its own uh, version of a, of a public portal. There's voyage control that uh, allows um, asset tracking and, and appointments. and and these are all fairly sophisticated uh, for-profit business models where um, you can interface your ERP software directly via API, application programming interface, or David mentioned um, yeah, EDI uh, as, a, as a pretty universal format for data exchange in, in the marine and port environment. But if, if all that is, is 
much larger than what you have as a, as a mom and pop importer or exporter. There are applications you can get on a phone, uh, DreQ, Peer Trucker, there are others there that, that are well, essentially free. I'm gonna showcase some of them. Um, and again, our, our workforces, you know, Mr. Uh, Chickalisi mentioned that, you know, we, we work with all kinds of different software. We're at least here on the, on the West Coast, we're what we call platform agnostic. Right, we'll use whatever piece of software the employer needs us to use to move the cargo, and we're happy to do it. This is just an example, and it's fairly typical. Um, you you pull up your application, you can pick a port: um, L.A., Seattle, Oakland, New Jersey, Boston, Virginia, Baltimore, Houston. Uh, Mr. Rob, you'll you'll be pleased to know that you can look up either Bayport or Barber's Cut on that. There's South Carolina, Jacksonville, New Orleans. This is just a screenshot, right? And if you pull up the particular port. It'll give you, um, in this particular application, the terminals. Uh, LA is, is down to a, a baker's dozen, you know, 13 container terminals. But you can see whether it's in LA, or whether it's in New York, or whether it's in um, Houston. It shows you the different piers. It will show you the turn times, the available um, shifts that the, that the terminal is open. It gives you um, the expected weight. And, and again, this is, a, this is a free app. So um, it, it markets, you know, it's got ads and banners, forgive that. Um, but if you, if you drill down even further, if you go to a specific terminal, if you're a beneficial cargo owner that needs insight as to what exactly is the status of your individual container, um, you can type that in and available to you is the line operator, its status, inbound, outbound, on the terminal, hold, held, free, clear, what its current location is, what its last free day is, so you know when your financial obligations uh, have begun or, or expire to, to move the thing. You can tell the last time it was moved. You have a unit number. You've got um, one of the, one of the, you've got the, the data exchange format, the ISO container type, um, it tells you the, imp we're looking at an example of an import. You can, you can see that the, that the vessel that brought it in has departed. Uh, you can see that the train that hauled it away is departed. You can tell who the line operator is. You can tell the specific train that was built in order to haul this uh, piece, particular piece of cargo inland. Oh, look, it's heading to Kansas City. You can see that. Um, we can see the phase that the train is working. We can see whether or not it requires power. Refrigerated cargo, of course, does. Uh, dry container does not. You can see that there are no impediments, no holds, no stops, either by vessel, rail, road. Um, if there were an impediment to stop, if this was an FDA container that required, say, inspection or fumigation, um, it, would, it would give you that information. Um, you've got your declaration date, you've got your last free day, uh, and the punch the time in, the time out, and all this, you know, the, and of course, the physical dimensions of your equipment. It's 40 foot long, it's eight and a half feet tall. Um, it's fairly, I think the, the eggheads use the term granular, and uh, it's pretty specific for, for what information is available for those who are shipping. And again, uh, this works well for smaller operators, but larger operators have platforms available to them where they can see this type of information um, forecasted to a, a prolonged extent um, possible, right? Everybody's worried about forecasts. Are you gonna come up short? Are you gonna be subject to the bullwhip effect? Um, but the point is that as far as marine terminals are concerned, that is available, that is granular, and that is ubiquitous. And you say, okay, well, that's fine for the container, but uh, Mr. Jones, what about the terminal operation itself, right? When does, when does, when can my truck get in? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked because a different screen on the very same app shows you, and this, um, and this, again, this pulls up all the different locations that are available in, in I'm, a, I'm a West Coast guy, right? I work on the left coast. So I picked Los Angeles. It tells you, I grabbed the end of the week. So you can see day, night, day, night, we're a 24 hour, 365 day a year operation, even though it's ad hoc, as Mr. Rob described, we, uh, we show up to work when the cargo's there. And of course, we're, we're, uh, our employers don't always opt to employ us on the weekends. Um, and you say, well, okay, great. So I know when I can go there and I know what my cargo looks like. What about, what equipment do I have available? Can I pick up an empty? Can I drop off an empty? You know, I'm glad you asked that too, because that also is available free of charge specifically by, by terminal, by date, by shift, 
my equipment type and um, of course this information is uh, uh, subject to change and and all the usual disclaimers um, the the question then becomes and and well okay if if all this data is available then is there a way to make it better right is there a way is there some efficiency you know dane that you could that, that you might need that your coworkers might access that would improve the flow of cargo across marine terminals and i tell you um in addition to being proud of the work that we've done over the last few years and and um and pleased to announce to our representatives in government that we um that we're doing good work for you um if you need to make a business case that you need additional data relative to terminal operations right if you if you if, there, if that business case actually exists and if you if you need more from us um it's going to be uncomfortable i know for our employers who see their terminal operating systems as proprietary and the management of their particular operations as competitive advantage over other segments of the industry right and i um i know mr chickalese's employers would be super interested in seeing my employer's data and and Wittershins likewise and both of which would like to see mr rob's data right the if you're going to get involved to that degree right and if and if everybody is going to connect all their erp software into one large portal then really we're talking about things like really how many rail cars are available on the west coast and when can i see them at a specific uh terminal right um how many chassis are in fact uh, in circulation right now and again what proportion of them will be available at which terminal um if you want to talk about projections and volumes you know mr rob's talking about having a worker for every job and mr vecchi he was rubbing his hand he could not wait to get a worker for every job and i don't know how you're going to do that without getting the major employers to give us an accurate forecast of specific volumes that they're going to move across our peers with specific inland destinations so that i can order those rail cars which the which the railroads of course are going to make available to us to get them moved on time my message today ladies and gentlemen is if you're backed up if you're waiting you're not waiting on us and with that i think we'll uh, We'll let Mr. Mr. Um, Commissioner, Mr. Benzel, Mr. Commissioner Benzel, Commissioner um, Vekic, fire away, hit me. What, what did I do wrong? Well, let's uh, let's go to Mike first, and then we'll go back. And and uh, uh, you made a lot of uh, good points, and and we're we're looking broadly at all data, not not just terminal data. And and frankly, I, I don't know if we need a granularity uh, of that uh, of the sort that uh, that the, the terminal operators uh, have in their uh, operating plans to us or, or navis or whatever it is but but uh, general uh, data on movement and status of movement through the system and there are uh, systems out there that are doing this now uh, so we're going to be looking at those and and maybe they can be used as is the the template for providing uh, information so hey mike uh, nice to see you again i'm gonna let you do the same thing as as dane and uh, give your observations okay thank you commissioner betzel it's great to see you and uh, commissioner maffei um thank you for having labor here today um it's great to see alan and uh david and give our best to dennis too i uh, wish he could have been here today um, I guess I'm batting cleanup. Uh, oh, congratulations, uh, Kakose, Commissioner Vekic. Uh, congratulations on your appointment. Glad you're there. Um, look, at, I'm batting cleanup. You heard, I, I can't top Dane ever when it comes to, uh, he's, our, he's our chairman of our Coast Tech Committee here on the West Coast, and I'm not gonna even try. But I, I think there's some underlying things that have been said here, and I just kind of want to bring them to the forefront since this is going to be on the record, Commissioner, is, is concerns. Um, you know, as, as Dane has put forth here, that information, uh, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, that's handled by a bargaining unit, which in our case here on the West Coast is the ILWU. And that information that the terminal operators give us, we, we've got, we get a lot of information. 
when I'm not uh, doing forms like this, I work at Long Beach Container Terminal, which is an automated terminal uh, here in Long Beach. So, and there's a lot of data that needs to come through in order to make that work correctly. The concern comes again, and, and we've had this discussion before, is about metrics. Information on the, on the terminal side, I, I believe we get plenty, like Dane has alluded to, and Brother Chickalise has alluded to, chassis, rail car information. We handle that data when it comes to the terminal. We also get an idea of what's coming into the terminal, but it's not open. It's not, it's not uh, detailed. We have a vague idea of how many chassis are coming. The terminal operators tend to know a little bit more because they're in direct contact with those entities. But for us, and again, I'm going to say it, is, is where this data goes into a one portal. You Look, at, if you're ordering an airline ticket, you go into each airline's portal to order that airline ticket. You cannot go into one portal and order three different airline tickets from three different companies. When you're working a rail op, or if you're on a railroad, you're, you're, the railroads do not track how many bags are being picked up by their porters and the people that handle the baggage. That's our concern is the metrics port portion of this. We had to deal with this a few years ago. <laughs> the concern here is, and you know, Carl, that there are entities out there, whether they be in Congress or not, that might use that to um, hurt a union for a collective bargaining agreement by that data, you know? So that's our big concern. I'm all for, and, and my big question is, and where we can maybe be a help is what information are those other stakeholders missing that they need? I've had discussions with the, the trucking industry numerous times, and they want a single platform where all that data goes into one space. I know that. I think we all know that. So they don't have to go to all the different terminals to get the information that they require. But what is that information that they're asking for? And, and I think that, I, and I, I'm, I, I'm gonna speak for both West and East Coast, that we do, know, <laughs> we do not want people in there affecting our CBAs at all. So, it, I mean, look, it, I, I know we're short on time here, uh, but I mean, if there's any way that we can help where we get into the weeds on things or on what people need, you know, we're more than willing to help help out with that. Thanks, Mike. Thank that's you. that's great. We 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 do have a just a little bit of time, but I did want to get in a couple of questions in the statement. Uh, I understand, you know, that we're not going to get involved in getting trying to get information about how many lifts an hour you're doing or. Uh, the things that I, I think we're uh, interested in is, you know, the status of cargo for pickup, you know, when, when free time uh, is over, uh, uh, when it's been put down for, for, uh, for delivery, when it, it can be picked up, uh, you know, not, not this, many of the, the same things that were in Dane's uh, app that's there, uh, try to standardize these things. And then some of those things outside of the game, but most of the things that I'm concerned about I don't know who it was, but maybe it was Mike or 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 or, uh, or someone and said, "Listen, we're we're handling cargo. We're handling cargo pretty efficiently. It's coming off the ship, but it's coming into a place that's jam filled. Uh, people are not picking up cargo. There's uh, problems connecting into into the warehousing. There's problems getting uh, trucking uh, and getting it through the system." and out into the intermodal system is the largest challenge that we're having in my view. And so, so we're not gonna get involved in uh, issues related to metrics of uh, port movement. I don't, I don't think it actually works very well because there's so many factors that impact uh, when cargo moves and how it moves. For instance, the shipper may say, I wanna keep it there. Uh, I don't have any space to the warehouse and that's not the fault of the terminal. So, we're not going to do that. We're not going to get involved in trying to uh, place uh, lame, uh, name, blame games between different parties. Uh, but I do think we're interested in, and, and we will be sharing uh, what our thoughts are on, on different uh, sorts of data that should be made available to the public in an accessible way to allow uh, them to be prepared to anticipate to the best extent uh, the movement of their cargo through the chain. And I think it goes all the way through. 
You know, I think the distribution centers, the large aggregators that are providing services that are integral to, to, to shipping need also to provide information. So I, I want, the, I want the, the, all of that information to be accessible, but we're not talking about detailed information about operations. We're talking about just where is the cargo, what status is, uh, it, it, can you provide, what are your operating hours? Um, you know, do you have equipment, surplus equipment? Uh, and so, uh, so I think we're not, uh, I, I can, I can tell you up front, we're not looking at issues that affect, uh, the negotiations that you have, uh, with your longshoremen, uh, in this exercise. And I pledge that to you. Um, and so, so, uh, I, um, we need your help, frankly, uh, and, and looking, making recommendations and, and seeing this, but. If we deviate into to issues that affect uh, collective bargaining, you, you just need to tell me, and, and that's not the intent. The intent here is to make the system more accessible, um, to provide information. I'm here in Chicago today with the railroads. There's a lot of things that they would like to know more about. You know, uh, shipments coming into their terminal. Once they get it, they have you know they have accessibility uh, to all of the information related to the movement of that cargo through the system. But then it gets to Chicago, and how do you get it out of the port, the terminal? You know, are are they are they taking too much time at the gates? Um, are truckers waiting too long? You know, apps to get in and out of of, uh, of gates. So so that's sort of what we're looking at. Um, but Max, I know I I want you to 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 uh, provide any questions you want. And uh, I, I I would say I'll let Max close out. Uh, he's new, and we want to get. Uh, him some experience, and he's also a long, a longshoreman, so he's probably the most appropriate uh, to talk to this. Uh, but we'll keep uh, the dialogue going on this as we go through this. Uh, again, we're only looking at information related to the movement status of cargo moving through the chain, and really not the operations of these uh, terminals. Commissioner, can I ask you one, one quick question? Sure. Um, one thing I think we could use the data information on is who's in control of the cargo and then when does the and when we transfer any control of it when it does it happen because a lot of people want to push off that it's not in their control so it's not their fault along with the next party is not their fault so we kind of need to if we could get something to define who really is in control it might help all parties to say i hate to say it but we have to point the finger at you it's your fault why it's there and sitting there for an extra yeah. 30 days. I think that's I think that's a really good point. Uh, you know, uh, status means who's in charge of it at that point, mm -hmm. who's in the best position to provide information, who's in the best position to be accountable for the cargo at that point. And so, yeah, I, that's that should be part of the exercise. You know, we we need to know uh, who's who's in control and who's responsible uh, for the movement at that point. And so, yeah. Uh, so uh, we we'll we'll keep in contact, but let's think of some ways that uh, as we go through this process of identifying uh, who to ask uh, is the responsible party. Uh, and I will give you an example before I turn it back over to Max. I keep on, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of situations where carriers were charging truckers uh, for demurrage uh, and making them pay demurrage. Uh, the cargo wasn't their cargo. So the poor truck driver gets a charge that he has to pay, uh, and it's defined in the in the in the contract of carriage between the DOC and the and the uh, carrier to include truckers, customs agents as responsible parties uh, under the clause of their of their contract of carriage. Well, that trucker doesn't have any responsibility uh, to pay those things. They're just a, a person that was hired to pick up. Uh, uh, cargo, um, but uh, it, it uh, creates a situation where you might have a trucker that comes in, and you you say we you got to pay all these things. The trucker's like, well, are you killing? I don't have to pay any of those. That's not my. I was hired to pick up the scar. So these are the sort of things we need to to uh, to clarify. And I think that's a good uh, comment. Hey Max, would you uh, like to make a question comment? Uh, how far more? How much more time are we do we have for the meeting? Uh, you Carl? know, we can be a little flexible. I'm actually going to have to get out of here to, to get on a plane. Uh, we have our 
staff here. Uh, she's flying back to Washington, D.C., so I've got to make sure. But go ahead. Uh, uh, proceed. Well, you know, Carly, that's a danger because I was a former state legislator <laughs> and, you know, we were not above the filibuster. Um, uh, this, 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 however, I, uh, I, my career is built on short speeches with some punch and, uh, but, uh, and, and I, uh, I was a longshoreman for uh, a union longshoreman for 25 years, but I was a union clerk for uh, 18 years. And, uh, I think it's great that you have a collection of clerks here because the Marine clerks are going to be the ones that help um, help uh, guide the way to a better way. And uh, and I believe uh, apparently like uh, Navis is always saying, you know, they, they I believe in better mousetraps, but I also believe uh, um, that there's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors involved with uh, this supply chain problem right now and that a lot of products are being suggested as silver bullets. When reality, we have you have the brain trust here, Carl, that I think can uh, can really help navigate through this uh, this system, and uh, and cargo is up and unprecedented, uh, unprecedented. And I and I thank the gentlemen and ladies uh, of these unions for making it happen, and um, you know, but uh, I think this is a, a welcome a welcome forum, and um, I, I I'm afraid uh, taking on uh, this. Uh, uh, a big data uh, effort, um, uh, you know. I'm I'm hoping that that you can find some uh, that that we, there'll be some nuggets of uh, that are uh, uh, truly uh, uh, assisting. But but just sharing information and uh, telling the story uh, as it really is, and not as it's being misportrayed, unfortunately, by the media. Although I'm not always sure they're trying to not get it right, but you know. <laughs> It, it, unless you work on the docks, I think, and I've been there, I don't think you have a really a true grasp. And, you know, it's not like you can just find a container in a terminal. I mean, you don't know. You, know, you may have a spot where that container is allegedly supposed to be, but it may not be there. It may have 20 containers ahead of it. And some truck driver, poor truck driver, thinks that they're going to go pick that container up right now because some app says you can have access to that container right now, you know, and there may be a half an hour of work to try to clear that container out. You know, it's uh, it's very complicated and it's not it's it's, it's not easy. And it's, there's so many variations. It's all true. However, um, what the industry has going for it, they have people that are dedicated to making it work. And I think uh, I, th I like the collection of people you put together here, Carl. And um, your willingness to embrace or engage on this issue. But I, I'm not sure silver bullets are possible, uh, despite all the uh, all the vendors out there that suggest they are. And uh, but it run, when it comes down to it, the men and women that made this happen, and you got them here, and you got their brains, and this is this is the way I think we can find some common ground and some perhaps some ideas that uh, can help and uh, and uh, uh, get us through this period of time. And I'll I'll shut up with, with that, Carl, and let. Well, but before we go uh, to Mr. Baggage, uh, Max, uh, it's great to have you on board. Uh, I, I, I recognize there's no silver bullet on this. I don't think we expect that there will be. Uh, I think we need to do better here uh, uh, in general to provide information. Uh, and I think we can do it without uh, interfering in the process. And hopefully uh, it will it will give us a, a, some sort of uh, additional uh, way to be uh, if efficient and, and as we move through the this uh, difficult period. Um, but I, I did uh, want to uh, echo your comments on the workforce and the importance of uh, maritime and and uh, and, uh, and I think uh, uh, Dane uh, talked about it a little bit, but it, it's incredible that we've you know everybody out there is talking about the the, the supply chain disruption uh, and we have carried uh, record numbers of cargo and this was done during the uh, COVID-19 and uh, I was recently reviewing uh, the legislation that uh, our government uh, uh, provided to support uh, the industry, uh, all industries in the United States through COVID and I, I noticed on the transportation section 
that uh, aviation and transit were awarded $113 billion of uh, funding to help them overcome COVID. Uh, Maritime got uh, $4 million. So 113 billion versus 4 uh, million, 0.004% or even less. And, uh, and we worked our way, uh, the industry, not me, I was at home uh, uh, having Chinese food and, uh, and uh, ordering things. Uh, um, uh, we worked our way through the system uh, and, and delivered record numbers of cargoes. And that's where we should start off. Uh, but we are trying to make this a better system. Uh, and I think we can do it without getting in information that, that would uh, in any way affect uh, the operations in the uh, terminals themselves, but, uh, but through the system provide more information to allow uh, people to be informed. Uh, and I think there's some frustration now uh, with where things stand at, at present and where I'm just hearing too much um, to think that it's not there. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, uh, thank you witnesses today. It was uh, great. Nice to see all of uh, you again. Uh, and I'll continue to work with you on this, uh, in the past on this issue and other issues, uh, Alan, we got to get bigger ships into, into Houston, uh, and, uh, and, uh, we got to get more workers. Uh, I think there's a need for, for more. And so, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and move forward. Uh, thanks, Max, for being here. Uh, it's helpful to have you uh, do some of these data hearings. So hopefully, hopefully you can do more uh, going forward. You bet, you bet, Carl, thank you. And, and with that, uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, call it close. Thank you.